How to know if clinical psychology is for you? Are you looking into going to grad school? Are you looking into going into clinical psychology school? If you want to know if grad school is for you or even if clinical psychology is for you, then stay tuned. We're going to talk about that in this video. What's up, fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Phil Sarpal, and this is Phil's Guide to PsyD. This channel is dedicated to all things clinical psychology. If you are interested in psychology, if you care about self-care and mental health, or if you want a little bit of a sneak preview into what grad school might look like for you, then this is the channel for you. So today we're gonna to talk about a very special topic, which is basically how to determine if clinical psychology school is for you, or even if clinical psychology, the career, is for you so in this video i'm going to give you guys five skill sets that i believe that every clinical psychologist should have and this is in no particular order right so the first one is going to be communication communication is huge as a clinical psychology doctoral student and even as a future clinical psychologist when you think about the career as a whole clinical psychologists are communicating they have to be really good communicators to other therapists, other psychologists. They're communicating to their patients in terms of their treatment and diagnosing. So there's a lot that's going on in terms of clinical psychologists. So they have to be really good at communicating their thoughts, their ideas, especially in therapy when they're listening to their clients. They have to know and understand how to communicate certain things in a very sensitive way. You have to understand that when clinical psychologists are working with patients and clients in therapy, there is a lot of emotion and feelings that are going on. And so basically clinical psychologists have to tread lightly in terms of how they say certain things, in terms of how they communicate certain things, and in terms of how they make other people feel comfortable around them. The next thing is research. Now, here's the thing. I know a lot of you are probably thinking about clinical PsyD programs and not PhD programs. And you know that PhD programs focus way more on research than most PsyD programs. But hear me out for a little bit. Research is important. Even for me, I don't necessarily want to do research for the rest of my life. But I think there is value in learning how to do research just in case I may want to do research about a particular topic in the future. And so in terms of research, when you go into clinical psychology school, it is gonna be about research because you're gonna to have to complete a dissertation at some point. And even if you choose not to do any research after you graduate from your program, I think just understanding the basic fundamentals of research will help you think in a critical way when it comes to certain disorders, when it comes to treatment, when it comes to diagnosing, and when it comes to helping your clients. Along with research is writing, right? And they kind of come together in, in that way where you do research and then you also write. Writing is huge. You will write a lot of papers in clinical psychology school. Be comfortable with your writing, get confident in your writing, learn about your writing skills, learn how to grow your writing skills. I think writing and research are very integral parts of clinical psychology and it's something that you should be familiar with and something that you should feel comfortable with if you're looking into going into becoming a clinical psychologist. The other thing, number three, is ethics. Now, when I think about ethics, I think about just in terms of really prioritizing the client. Basically, everything that you do for the client is for the client. You are not in therapy for yourself, you're in therapy for the client. There are gonna be different cultures that handle therapy or handle treatment or even handle psychology from different perspectives and different views. And so as a future psychologist, you really have to be aware of those cultural differences as well as take into mind the ethics that are involved in becoming a psychologist. So if you can go in terms of making sure that you want your clients, you want the best for your clients, you also want to not do any harm to your clients, I think that is really, really an important concept that you can carry all the way through clinical psychology school and especially into your professional career. All right, number four is going to be empathy. Empathy is going to be so crucial as a clinical psychology doctoral student as you go through your practicum sites as well as professionally as you become a clinical psychologist. Obviously, when you're in the therapy room, you are basically attuning to the client, to the patient, 
you are listening to them, you're communicating to them, but you're also really empathizing with their pain, with their sorrow, with their grief, with their issues, with their problems. You are invested in prioritizing them in that moment and you're giving them a space to really be themselves. You're giving them a space to really feel safe around you. And as you listen in, you really attune to their emotions. And the more that you can attune to their emotions, the more that you can really connect to their pain and their feelings. And that's where all of those communication skills come up because that's when you can also learn from your treatment options and from even diagnosing, and even from learning how to be a clinical psychologist, you can learn some of the things of what to say and how to guide people through a lot of their grief or their sorrow or their pain. The last thing, number five, is going to be problem solving. Now, as a future psychologist, even as a doctoral student, you have to be a critical thinker. The reason I say that is that in the mental health field, there's a lot going on and you have to understand a lot about diagnosing, especially when you're diagnosing different mental health disorders. But you also have to understand about different treatment options. There's a number of different treatment options out there. There's a number of different types of therapy out there. And so as a problem solver, as a psychologist, you're really trying to make sure that the treatment that you give to your clients or to your patients really fits them. It's kind of like a shoe size, like you really want the treatment to really be specific for them. As a problem solver, hopefully that can help you with the diagnosing part, hopefully that can help you with the treatment part, and hopefully that can help you with prioritizing your client and your patient to know when to send them and refer them to somebody else and to know when to ask for help and to know when to get advice and to know when to, how to lead them through your treatment options. So guys, those are the five skill sets. Those are five skill sets that I believe will not only help you in grad school, but will also help you professionally in your life. You're not just thinking about these skill sets for clinical psychology school, you're thinking about these skill sets for your professional career. And so if you are trying to figure out if clinical psychology is for you, then think about some of these things. Think about communication, think about research, think about ethics, think about empathy, and then also think about how much of a problem solver you are, how much of a critical thinker that you are, because I think all of those five elements are needed. Now, I can make this list 10, 15, 20, maybe even 50, but I pick these five skill sets because I think these are some things that clinical psychology doctoral students really try and emphasize in their programs, as well as you'll probably see later on in your career as well, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. If you guys have any questions or comments, put it down in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. With that, I will see you guys in the next video.